Hi, my name is Ian Hartman, Solution Architect at Western Computer, and welcome to part one in a series of videos focused on configuring products using Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain. The purpose of the product configurator is to provide users with a facility that will enable them to create a generic reusable model structure, which can have multiple user-defined variations. This functionality will not only reduce the number of items in the product master tables, but more importantly, it will allow the user to configure a customer-specific finished item by dynamically building the associated bomb and route, and additionally, creating the appropriate sales price for this configured-to-order product. Configure products can be used in sales quotations, sales orders, purchase orders, production orders, project item requirements, and even intercompany orders. In this series, I'll explain how business rules and constraints are set up using a system-guided, easy-to-use interface. What does this mean to you? Simply put, it gives you the ability to get started quickly and make on-the-fly version-controlled modifications as your business changes and grows. I'm also going to show you right now the end-user experience by taking a simple sales order. I'll be using an out-of-the-box product, D0004 which is a high-end speaker and comes in different finishes and sizes. So let's take a look. Let's just open up D365. And I'm going to start off with all sales orders. All I did is hand type that in here. It takes me to my sales order form. I'm going to click on new. I'm going to pick a customer for my list. It doesn't really matter who it is. Let's pick Macy's, for example. I'm going to take the defaults here. Again, not important for the purpose of this conversation. We're going to go into our lines and under item number, you notice here it shows constraint based items. Because we're working with product configurator and there are constraints, these are the items and the only items I want to show. This is a parameter. I'll show you later how to get there. If we clicked on all items, we would now be looking at every item in the system the way your default is currently set. So I just changed this and it came in right now. Our default was constraint based. I'm going to pick D004. At this point, it brings in all the default values for that. I'm going to click on product and supply. This allows me to now configure my part. So because it's a configurable item, I have the user on the phone. I can do things like calculate the price. I can calculate a delivery date. I can load an existing template. I can do things like this particular product is configurable by the type of finish on the cabinet and the grill and whether there's corner protection or what is the height of this speaker. So I'm going to say I'm picking an oak and immediately it came back with black and disabled the corner protection because of rules and constraints, business rules that have been written, which I'm going to be showing you shortly. Notice also how black is checked off here and white and metal are sort of grayed out, as I call it, X'd out. The reason is they're not feasible under the rules when using Oak. So for example, if I were to turn on show only feasible, now you'll notice all that shows up here is black. And this is a great feature because it allows us to say that if I have hundreds and hundreds of variations, I only want to show what is viable for its hierarchy parent. In this case, cabinet finishes of oak are only available with black grills. Now I'm picking a speaker height of 10. And again, maybe it's only feasible that this particular combination of oak black does not come in 10. But if it does, I pick 10. Now, look here how there's an assembly runtime. This is a calculation. I'm going to show you that in an upcoming video as well. But the end user experience is where I'm an order taker and I can say, oh, if you said it's 15 inch, then I'm going to have a runtime assembly of, a, you know, an hour and a quarter. If it was 10 inch, it's 0.75. I may not need to tell that to the buyer at the other end of the phone, the end consumer or whoever I'm selling it to. But it's important for me to know. And it's also important for the purpose of this demonstration to show you a calculated field. So... We're going to click OK. The system is going to bring back the calculated price and the delivery date. The reason these are up here, by the way, is so that when I'm quoting the system, I can run through different variations and iterations with the appropriate uh, buyer on the other end of the phone, the end user customer. 
and discuss with them their options. Now, notice how the configuration came back numbered with oak, black, 10, false. That represents that I picked an oak unit, a black uh, grill with a 10 uh, inch speaker, no corner guards and the 128, which is really a relationship of how long it's gonna take to assemble. It also, and that's based on, again, system configuration rules that I'm gonna show you in the next video. It also created right there on the fly as I had mentioned in the introduction, a bomb. So here is this bomb item number. It is my high-end cabinet. It's available in oak because I picked oak when I configured this. Here is my grill. It's available with a cloth black. That's what I picked. And the other things such as the crossover, standard, I have a non-configurable, or what tweeter is going into this particular speaker are also not configurable. I'm also showing you that I created the route. So this route was built on the fly as well and notice it's been built specifically for this configuration. And we're gonna discuss number sequences and things like that uh, right now. Let's go over to, everything we're doing here is coming from this product information management module. And we're gonna look at the parameters under product information management. What I wanted to show you here is this constraint base area. Notice where it says configurable and default. When you come in here by default, it's set to default. If you look at the description by hovering over the label, it's gonna tell you that it is configurable and when you pick configurable, your list is gonna to change to what we saw on the sales order side. Some of the other things that are important here is the price model. Are you attaching a price model of the sales price breakdown that the system calculates? And if so, what is that format that you're attaching? Um, what are you doing for number sequences, for example? How is my product number sequence? What is my constraint number sequencing? All this is set up here in the parameter section, okay? So what we're gonna do is next, we're gonna be looking at, in our next video part two, the product configuration models and how to start setting them up. For more information, please feel free to go over to westerncomputer.com. You'll see additional videos. My name is Ian Hartman, Solution Architect, and we'll be seeing you soon.